not sure everybody, but very and ready. I'm yep. very proud of my son and his wife. Okay. We live. Okay. Basically said. So if I could uh, bring the room to order. <laughs> and and uh, but and it, you know it's becoming. I mean, it's funny. I, I spend my days in the library, and you look at. The, Oh, okay. sorry. All right. Anyway. <laughs> all right, all you uh, rowdy ones in the audience, if we could <laughs> bring it to a dull roar. All the rowdy ones. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to call the select board meeting of Tuesday, December 11th to order. And the first uh, item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any changes to the agenda? Okay, here and none. I will also uh, point out we have a brief executive session on uh, at the end of, of the meeting for Kathleen to bring us up to date on an issue we've been working on. So all in favor of approving the agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, next item is approval of the minutes of our November 27th regular business meeting. So Move. moved. <laughs> moved and seconded. Are there any uh, recommended changes? One small one, uh, line 22, it says Nick Ardem called the meeting, I think it was you. Right. I was trying to recall doing that. Yes. I was thinking I may have, but I don't recall. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. I must have skipped Any other? No. Okay, hearing none other. Um, all those in favor of approving the amended minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, citizen comments. Is there anyone here for something that is not, please? Yes. My name is Jeff Bratzbis. Um I'm relatively new to the town. Um, but in, in the year and a half or so that we've lived here, I've noticed that there's several areas in the town as a cyclist and a pedestrian that are perhaps areas of friction that I feel a little bit unsafe. Um, I'm glad that there's some movement on that front, especially in the Pulp Mill Bridge um, sidewalk project that's gonna be discussed this evening. I think that's a great, uh, a great direction to move in. Specifically, I'd like the um, select board to consider making an assessment of the block of High Street between Stewart Lane and Seminary Street. Um, that's an area that um, many users use uh, constantly, whether that it's actually part of the TAM as well, as you may know. Um, folks who frequent the Swift House Inn certainly use it, and then lots of other citizens, whether they're walking their dogs or, um, or their kids to school, use it. I am not here to present uh, any ready solution. I'm not saying that um, police patrols or uh, traffic calming devices or better signage or a sidewalk is the solution, but I would like to know what you guys can provide in terms of an assessment to perhaps make that feel a little bit safer um, and at least put it on the list of, of these areas that we need to, to look more closely at. And that's, uh, that's why I came tonight to, uh, to speak to you. Okay, um, I, th I think we'll take it as a list of, of things to look at. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure we're, that we've studied that and are, are prepared to give any response, but we appreciate you bringing that, uh, bringing that forward. Okay. Um, we may, if you could leave your contact information, uh, we, we may at, at some point uh, ask you for more information. We actually have a, <coughs> a citizen uh, sheet to introduce topics. And if we're looking for more, but, but uh, as a starter, we'll, uh, I think, take it under advisement as to what you've brought up and take a look at that. Okay. Is this the best way to bring things like that up, or is there a way uh, to do this more This works letter? fine. Okay. Yeah. No, not trying to chase you away on that at okay. all. Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there a, anyone else here for something that's not on the agenda? Okay. Here and none. I'm um, going to bring Adam forward here, and Adam's going to talk to us uh, about the, the bids on our Polk Millbridge Seymour Street sidewalk project that uh, has been in the works for four years, three uh, years, four years. I think the, the, plan, the 
planning phase of it was done in the in 14 so yeah, yeah four, four years. years so yeah. pretty exciting to get to the point where we're yeah hopefully letting a bid here yes oh. um, and, and I hope that's where we get to um, so in your package was the bid recommendation from VHB the con or the engineers on the project um, just to <coughs> give you a little background um, this sidewalk project is a contract project of about $760,000. Um, that includes the town's share, and it's a joint project with the town of Weybridge. Um, you've spent about $98,000 on um, engineering. The bid, um, the low bid, apparent low bid, which I'm asking that you uh, accept, is $498,000. You've spent about $20,000 with um, the Regional Planning Commission for project management and some other miscellaneous items. That leaves you within your budget about $130,000 for inspection. So with this bid, I would expect that we will be uh, basically on budget. Um, you accept this bid, we'll go to contract. Um, the contract documents have a, uh, um, it needs to be completed by July 19th of next year, of next summer. Um, so we get them to start in the spring. Um, let's see, your inspection RFP, or to get an inspector on the project is out to bid right now. Um, so we should have that early this winter. Um, I think bids are due January 10th. Um, let's see. So um, uh, Weston Excavating was the low bidder um, at $498,000. The next low bid was Champlain Construction at $552,000. <coughs> um, as I said, VHB went through the contract and basically um, has made a recommend, analyzed all of the all of the items, and made a recommendation that you all accept the bid. Um, they came in under sealed bids. Um, so that's the action that I am looking for you to take this evening. Okay. So thank you, Adam. Questions of Adam on, on the bids? So then um, VHB is confident and Weston's confident they can meet that July deadline? Yes. Weather um, permitting, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it was clearly stated in the bid documents. Yes. So they understand that it's there. Obviously, weather permitting. Okay. So, so um, I'm, I'm trying to remember this company. Did we do business with this company and have an issue with them? Uh, yes, you're remembering correctly. Don Weston was the contractor on the North Pleasant Street project. So I'm just wondering about that and whether and um, so maybe, I discussed, maybe we can expect I extra scrupulousness. I discussed that uh, <laughs> issue extensively with Adam, um, mm -hmm. and he did some extra reference checking. And we're also going to keep that in mind as we look for a construction uh, oversight um, engineer. Um. So um, there are a couple of things that you have that are in place within the bid documents to help you with that. So one, there is a, a construction inspector um, that will be on the job. The other are the bonds that are required of the contractors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these come in at, as sealed bids. So, so theoretically, they're they're basically uh, as, assuming they meet the, all the criteria, and they have. They're intended to be basically a, mm -hmm. a relatively easy decision for you. Um, I don't. I couldn't, in, within the, the VTrans documents, I, if you don't want to do this, I couldn't find a way to, uh, to not go forward, or I didn't find one. I've, I've got a conference call with Chris Hunt, or a call with Chris Hunt tomorrow at 10.30, mm -hmm. um, if, that's, if you send me away and ask me to find more information about that. Um, and again, why were the bids higher than what the engineers estimated? Um, that's not uncommon. Okay. Um, they weren't. They were higher. I would say that they were probably not really significantly higher. Um, uh, you know, again, VHB looked at it, and, and, and actually VTrans told me they were relatively happy with an 8% variance on the bids. It, it might have something to do with timing. I noticed that the biggest things in here were uh, um, actually the granite curbs. The prices on the granite curbs was a, were a big part of the difference. Um, it could just be that granite curbs went up. Right. I, I don't really have a good answer for you that. You also mentioned landscaping um, as a oh. variable cost, possibly. I think we put it in here as a uh, as a as um, an allotment. So mm -hmm. basically, everybody bid on the same amount. They all put in the same yeah. um, allotment for it. So 
they could change a little bit, but not. It's not. A, it's not a significant part of this project. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Anyone else? So I would ask pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion to award a contract to Western Excavating Inc. for construction of the pulp mill bridge, Simo Street sidewalk project for a total cost of four hundred ninety-eight thousand five hundred ninety-seven dollars. Moved and seconded. Any final comments? Here are none. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, so thank you, Adam. Uh, thank you. I, I guess I would just make sure that we do have that the construction superintendent, which is in part of the process. Uh, you know, I, I think we have a, uh, maybe a, you know, one bad experience doesn't make him a bad contractor, but I think what was more disheartening was the way he handled it after the way f for us. And so, uh, but I, we, we're looking forward to having a good project here and we're now we're ready to move on to Exchange Street. Great, so. good. And um, you've already got some good bids on, or some people, a number of people interested in, or ex who have expressed interest in your inspection services and, and Kathleen's on the selection committee and uh, we'll make sure we, we make sure that, we'll make sure that they know of the history and uh, are prepared to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Thank you, Great. Adam. Thanks. There's Chief. So Chief's here to discuss a award of a uh, the next police cruiser. Or I like the the beard look, Chief. <laughs> seasonal. Yeah, seasonal. Raised a lot of money for Camp to come to. I love it. <laughs> a couple of weeks, it goes away. Uh, this year we're scheduled to get one car this budget year. We uh, advertised the bids publicly. We received two bids in return, uh, one from Foster Motors for a 2019 <coughs> Dodge Charger, the other one from G-Stone Motors for a 2019 Ford Interceptor Utility. The uh, Foster Motors bid was 28735 and they'll give us $5,000 for the trade-in of our oldest car with a net bid of 23735 uh, G Stones uh, bid 34859 for the SUV utility and 4000 for the trade in with a net bid of 3859. Both bids meet the specifications. Or actually, um, the plan this year was to get another sedan. Uh, G Stones did not bid on the sedan because they couldn't get the pricing from Ford on a bid for the 2019. Uh, so we've talked to them and we're going to move the bids up a little uh, later next year, the next time we bid the cars to give them the opportunity. Uh, to bid on the sedan. We were unaware of that. This is typically the time of year we put the bids out, but they had a problem getting pricing from Ford. Uh, anyway, the low bid meets all the specifications and we're pleased with that. Okay, questions of Chief. Look. I don't have a question because I support the bid, Tom, but I did um, mention to Kathleen and to you that uh, in in looking at the renewable energy po policy and going forward, that when we're looking at vehicles, we're looking for alternatives too. And I don't know um, when the next car might be purchased, but if that's the, the opportunity to help do the research on other cost comparisons, I would like to support that. Um, I can tell you that the town of Hartford got a Vermont Clean Cities grant to purchase a Tesla S for their police force as a pilot to see how that works. So that's something we could watch and see how they do, you know, with that vehicle. Of course, it's three times the cost of what we're bidding for. But the fuel, again, we're looking at, you know, the fuel difference. Of course, you do have to pay for the electric, you know, for fueling the car. But um, I've heard that GMP will offer uh, free charge charging and maybe even nothing for nighttime charging of the vehicle. So. I don't know how long that would be, but those are just some factors to consider for the future when we're looking at acquisition of vehicles that I wanted to mention. Yeah, we've looked at those. Uh, the only concern we have with a fully electric type vehicle is the space they take up for the batteries in the car itself. We looked at Ford is coming out with a hybrid uh, police interceptor type vehicle, but it's, it's mm -hmm. new and they weren't ready to bid on it this year. Yeah. Uh, we looked at that last year when they were in development. Um, I don't want to be on the bleeding edge of this kind of technology and get a car that's going to fall apart on us in a year. 
Uh, the other problem with a car, fully electric car, you've got to take it out of service for two-thirds of the time while it's charging. That's another issue we have. You almost have to buy two or three cars to have one car, whereas, the, of course, a gas car, you just put gas in it and drive it. So we're more interested in what Ford is offering uh, for next year that, that I've talked to Travis down there, and he is interested in putting a bid in that for next year would be the hybrid. We do have one Ford hybrid right now. It's working out fine. It's a limited-use car. It's the investigator's car. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a, a police patrol car, so it's, you know, it's yeah. only gets six, seven, eight thousand miles a year on it, and it, it's fine. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, we're following that. But right now there's, uh, again, we put out a public bid, and we have to have people bid on it to be considered. Um, right. But we'll amend our specifications next year when we go back out mm -hmm. to include alternate fuel vehicles as well. I am wondering, though, if, if the amount of charging time is different for the Tesla um, so you wouldn't be with that? Um, yeah, anytime you've got obstacle. to take a car out of service to charge, whether it's three hours or two hours or 10 hours, it's still a period of time, time. where the car is not available. Yeah. Uh, and that's the only issue we have about a purely electric car. Whereas the, yeah. the hybrid runs on right. electricity until you need gas, and then it switches to right. gas by itself. That's The other one is fine. Yeah. Um, okay. I really would like to, before we run into a big expense, maintaining these things and see how they work out for room in the trunk mm -hmm. uh, and it being able to handle full electrical load that the cars have is to make sure that, again, we're not on the bleeding edge of some technology. And let's see how, how it works out and how other departments are using them first. Okay. But it is something we considered. We'll certainly put it in, amend the bid package next year to include an alternate fuel vehicle, and we'll see what comes out. I mean, that's about the best we can do right now. Right. And I also just wanted to say that there might be grant money, you know, for yep. the town. Well, Travis said he'd keep me appraised on what's going on with the with this hybrid, this police interceptor hybrid, which I Mm -hmm. kind of unique yeah. usually you need usually the problem with the hybrids is they're not good for this kind of work because they don't have the power or the stamina uh -huh. to deal with the the kind of work they do but we'll see okay thank you tom In, instead of fully electric you might also think about plug-in hybrids right so that can run on gas also yeah that's the that's the hybrid ford is coming out with yeah it's a that's the one they use now that we have on our other car uh, which works fine in that kind of service capability. So we got away from the big V8 on that kind of car. But we'll see how it works and how well the departments are using and how they're rating them. Uh, the state of Michigan does a lot of tests on different police vehicles. They come up and they publish the results every year. So we'll follow it and we'll see. Technology is only going to get better. And uh, we'll see. We'll put the bids out next year and we'll see what happens. Well, and the other thing is we obviously have to make sure it's warranted for police service. I it is a police interceptor. It's no, no, no. The police, the Ford will yeah. be. There's no question about that. I, I, mm -hmm. I question some of the others whether, you know, t Tesla would, would warranty a police service. But either way, you're, you're getting the right. Well, I'm issue. concerned about insurance too. When you use a non-police spec vehicle for this kind of purpose, insurance companies tend to get a little antsy. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good consideration. So, I'm happy to make the motion um, to award the contract to Foster Motors for the purchase of the. 2019 Dodge Charger for a net cost of $23,735. Moved and seconded. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. So, uh, John and Aaron, if you'd like to come forward, and Mark. So, this evening we're uh, going to see the final landscape design proposal that uh, Mark has worked on after listening to comments uh, at the, at the uh, public hearing and from the input from the Planning Commission and Design Advisory Committee joint meeting as well as their individual final wrap-up meetings and letter input to him. And so with that, uh, I think Aaron's going to lead us through this with Mark. We can sit right there, that's fine. <coughs> uh, we don't really have a mic that goes over there. Uh, we're going to go quickly. If you have anything you want to stop and chat about, feel free to just uh, shout it out. Um, I'm, I, I should say I'm going to go quickly so that I can give Mark some time <coughs> to explain where we ended up. Oh, some before you start, uh, these are the nice ashlar blocks that are being established. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, the, the project, as we know, reconstruction of Main Street and Merchant Row Bridges. 
reconstruction of the railroad corridor, um, village green park space, and then reconstruction of Printer's Alley, created some, some public park space there as well, uh, Lazarus Park. <coughs> some of the design influences, um, what's allowable by the environmental regulations, the permitting, uh, incorporation of the public input, and then incorporation of uh, town government input as well. So touch on the environmental regulations first. Um, really there's three primary elements that we're looking at. National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, um, that's kind of an overall assessment of the project and its impact on social, economic, environmental um, uh, aspects uh, of, the, of the proposed action. The federal government calls it a proposed action. That's the project. U.S. Department of Transportation Act, Section 4F, and the National Historic Preservation Act, uh, Section 106. 4F deals with use of public <coughs> lands. So the park spaces are considered public lands, existing public lands, uh, prohibited, from be prohibited to be converted to a uh, transportation use unless there's no feasible and, and prudent alternatives. And then on 106, um, it protects listed or eligible to be listed national register historic places from adverse effects from those, those federal actions. So what does this mean for this project? For Section 4F, it means we really can't have permanent changes to decrease the size of the park space, the existing park space that's pre-project. No encroachment of curbs or creation of parking in those park spaces. Uh, and it's for Section 106, no adverse effects to the Village Green. Um, so the park really, it has to maintain its, its historic integrity um, from pre-project to post-project. The fountain has to remain and, and the overall park has to provide that um, historical context or has to fit with the historical context. Um, and that's the scale, that's the grass, the green space and hardscape has to maintain that feeling. Um, so before we get to the public and the town government input, I want to quickly I'm going to highlight the process that's been used here. So starting in the spring of this year, gathering information, uh, the first public meeting was in June, brainstorming ideas and, and more of a workshop theme. Uh, we then went away and developed some concepts. September, we had another public meeting to present those concepts, uh, solicit public input. <coughs> um, leaving that meeting with all the input, uh, refine the design concepts, uh, developed additional concepts September and November we were back in front of the public in November Mark presented to the select board uh, those concepts and then subsequently to the uh, Planning Commission and the Design Advisory Committee uh, to be able to get additional input those designs were were refined and we started working on our uh, we called it a working draft so those two concepts that, that Mark had presented to the select board along with our working draft was, was then presented again at a public meeting just last week. Uh, received some additional input. Um, and, and Mark went to work over the weekend and, and yesterday on, on a few more tweaks. So here we are tonight. We're going to present our recommended alternative and ask for the select board's endorsement of that recommended alternative. So just a little bit of the process that we've gone through. We're going to recap uh, those points of input. In June 2018, public uh, workshop. This really focused on what are the existing conditions? What are the parameters we're working with? What are the sizes of these areas? Um, so we had the Village Green area. Uh, there was a site analysis for the Village Green. Uh, we had the, the Printer's Alley area. Um, and then we had the, the site analysis for the, the Printer's Alley area. So following that, that analysis, what are the sites? We had some brainstorming sessions. We had some hard copies of the spaces, drew out some concepts. Um, you can see in the background here, Jim's writing down ideas as, as um, there's some drawing happening. And, and really you know, developing what are those ideas? What is, what is gonna drive this from that public input perspective? Um, event, assembly and event space and public restroom and the lunchtime meeting space, water features were all topics that came up. There was a, there was a list and list of, of topics. 
So we went away, worked on the, on the concept design, and then in September, uh, the public presentation. So the, the focus shifted from that, that first meeting of the broad ideas and any idea, let's record it, to let's, let's now start to work on focusing onto you know, the concept that, that we're gonna develop and, and move forward. So we worked within those, those environmental restrictions, our space limitations. Um, we had met with the municipality, the Department of Public Works, um, to get input on, uh, on any concerns there and then really worked on designing spaces that, that could be flexible. <clears throat> These are the concepts that were, were initially presented. Uh, this is concept one from the, the Village Green perspective. Concept two for the Village Green, uh, shifting to Printer's Alley. Concept one for Printer's Alley. Concept two for Printer's Alley. And then we had a, a uh, a discussion about you know the pros and cons of these spaces and what we heard was more open space in the park provide more hardscape or a plaza feeling to the uh, the village green area um, there was a question asked about removal of the fountain when we went away and we did we did some research on that um, to, to really determine <coughs> is that a possibility or does it have to stay there it, it does have to stay Keep Printer's Alley simple, we heard, and then really focus on making sure Printer's Alley is, is creating that, that connection between the Main Street, Village Green area, and Riverfront Park. So again, we went away and, and worked on um, additional design concepts. Uh, these are some drawings that, that Mark had done. Concept A, um, this, um, this concept created additional open space. Um, but still had quite a bit of, of the, the greenscape as well. Printer's Alley was simpler, um, but still had some grassed areas. Uh, alternative B was much more hardscape um, and uh, some additional vegetation, removal of the grass in, in Printer's Alley. Like I said, these were presented um, to the Planning Commission, <coughs> Design Advisory Committee, and then to the public last week. Um, so the the input that we received from the Planning Commission, uh, really from, I, I feel like there was a sense that concept A was, was preferred, but incorporate even more hard space, <coughs> or more hardscape. <coughs> um, to create a vibrant uh, edge for the street, edge for Village Green, um, and then a mountable curb up on, on Merchants Row so that potentially trucks could be backed in um, for events. Um, adding color was important planters and flowers. The crosswalks, we had showed uh, one crosswalk with some kind of stone pavers as a bump out, and there was a request to uh, incorporate additional bump outs for the other crosswalks. Um, let's see here, the lighting plan. Develop an, an appropriate lighting plan, electrical and water hookups throughout the park space. Better connection to the, to the rest of the village greens. We've got the nice area that's in front of the church, um, but around to the south side creating a better connection to that, to that rest of the green that's not part of this project. And then really to eliminate some of the difficult to maintain grass areas, the points where grass came to a point or the grass in, in Printer's Alley that maybe would be hard to maintain and, and mow in that area. So um, this led to the working draft that was presented on Wednesday of last week. We took into a lot of, uh, a lot of the input we, we received, we took into you know, um, several tweaks. Um, really, the main themes were we, we increased that hardscape and, and maximized it as much as we could. The flowers and the plantings, the pedestrian bump outs. We eliminated grassed areas in Lazarus Park completely and then um, came up with an ADA accessible pathway through the park. Here's the, uh, the working draft that was presented last week. And I think what I'll do, I've, I've kind of sped through everything. Um, we're coming towards you know the the next iteration of this. Maybe I'll pause here for a moment. Mark, do you want to just hit on you know maybe the yeah. the elements here, knowing that we're going to get to the final recommendation? A couple of the elements we brought up last week on this plan was this corner didn't seem to connect and flow into the park quite so well. Uh, there was some concern along the street here. The way the planters for the flowers and benches were arranged was blocking access into the park, except for right at the trees themselves. So, you know, if you wanted to back a vehicle for tents, you couldn't really do it. Um, 
there was, a kind of, uh, this, there was a concern here over this path. You know, it's steeper. It's 8.3 percent path. Uh, someone mentioned, could it go to like eight feet wide from six, just to make sure people could pass uh, adequately and be comfortable with a green light path? So we took it, took a look at those uh, pieces of it. <coughs> So at, at that meeting, there were a number of discussion points. The meeting, I think it went on for two and a half hours. A um, lot of discussion, a lot of good discussion. Um, but some of the, we kind of hit on some of the key points here. Um, so we, we had kind of said right up front, that's the maximum amount of hardscape that we can provide and really maintain <coughs> that look and feel and the historic context. Um, the, fountain, um, the fountain has to stay, but there was a lot of discussion about the location of it, the size, the base configuration, potential wading pool around the fountain. And I think that, I think that conversation, it started out with um, some support for a wading pool, but by the time we got to the end of the conversation, I think a lot of the, the mothers in the room had weighed in and said, we don't really want our kids, we wouldn't allow our kids to play in, in, in that area anyway. And that came full circle and I think kind of got us back to the place where we were with the recommended location, reusing the existing base. <coughs> um, the use of, of red maple street trees. So uh, a maple tree that, you know, when the, when the leaves turn color in the fall will be a red color. Um, and, and Mark got onto that. He's already got the species picked out. Um, connection to the rest of the village green was again, you know, talked, talked about quite a bit as Mark said. <coughs> we had a a kind of a lengthy discussion about parking along Merchants Row and is there potential to reconfigure the curb lines or, or um, arrange that parking so we could get diagonal parking and, and we came to the conclusion with input from Central Highway that we, we can't do that. We have to keep the curb line where it is. We can't change the size of that park. Uh, the ADA accessible pathway through Lazarus Park, I think there was a lot of support for that. Um, as we mentioned at the meeting, the public meeting, Part of it is on Marble Works property, and so that, you know, in order for that to go forward, the town would really have to mark, work with Marble Works to, to accommodate those impacts. And then um, a lot of additional discussion about Printer's Alley and that configuration. And the bank building, the landscape strip, the sidewalk, the roadway, and then, and then the Lazarus Park. Um, talked a lot about, you know, different options there, and roadway widths, and curb heights, and, and sidewalk grades and the pathway grade and you know as Mark said then you know through Lazarus Park six foot pathway and now it's an eight foot pathway you'll yeah. see in the next version um, uh, there was discussion about a railing along the sidewalk along along uh, the bank um, so a lot of discussion there we have for this this concept we're going to show we have left that space kind of blank it's it's an area that um, the design or the, the spacing was more or less dictated as part of the agreement between the bank and the town. So they have said five foot strip next to the building, five foot sidewalk, curb, roadway, and then you know whatever's left over for the park <coughs> space. So um, I think as we understand it, a, lo a lot of that direction may come from the, the bank as to, to what can happen in that space. They, they technically would still own that, that property you know, where that green space is. So um, here we are. This is our um, you know, presentation of the, the recommended alternative. So I'll pass this over to Mark to, to go through everything. OK, if you start here along the street edge, these are an Acer Rubrum from Monia. It's a, a Sienna Glen cultivar with the red ball color. I've moved. To open up circulation in the park, I've moved the flower or perennial or uh, pollinator beds now I'm right into this section centered on the tree. The uh, ashlar block benches are directly behind that. I've added back in the idea of the movable tables. It would be a town institute thing if they want. I think it actually would be really quite nice there. Uh, so there's a series of these things coming along. Uh, back into this area, these ashlar blocks, the uh, like shrub beds that are behind them, we've removed those such that you can sit on either side of these. 
if you wanted to face the church if you wanted or face out you know on the more sunny side of things so they work dual sided now in those areas on this corner you know it was brought up a lot of times about it wasn't feeling quite right integrating with the park so i found a way these are existing utilities to sweep a path through those and connect into the existing walks that are already out there um, this was me going off the reservation and suggesting an idea that you could keep going, hook the gazebo up to this main path that exists. There's a lot of ideas in there we can explore I how to do it as future improvements, but I thought that really made a nice connection with the gazebo and up to these main crosswalks. Um, over on to Printer's Alley, uh, we, what, this is the section here, we widened eight feet such that it flows pretty nicely. That is a good improvement in terms of something that's that steeper. Steeper of a grade gives a little more generous space. People come into your way as the gentleman pointed that out. And then along Merchant's Rail through this section is where we are suggesting we would do the angle grade curve so that the car could back up on it. The space I chose between these trees, two trucks could fit between those side by side in this park, 10 foot wide park. And so, um, throughout the process, there's been a lot of discussion about potential events to be held in the park. Um, farmers market has come up time and time again. Peasant market, um, other events. Mark spent some time trying to lay out um, potential uh, ten by ten tent sites for uh, Village Green and, and Merchants Row. So this is there. A, there was a lot of concern, a lot of desire to have a really flexible space for this. So using the 10 foot by 10 foot tent module, the pop up <coughs> tent things that vendors can use, I just I laid them out to see how many you could actually get on this and on Burns Row. So if you, if you imagine the user staying on the pavement here, these are all tents that you'd access from the front. You can make a turn and go into these. Uh, these guys from behind using this walk, they can wheel their goods in to those areas, like the service area from behind. Uh, four of them fit here. That's right, here's the main walkway. Then four here, <coughs> you leave the center open to the fountain so that people could walk into this and you have this really dynamic center space here that you could have your tables in there if there were food vendors or places for people to sit. So you get 26 in the park, and then if you shut Merchant's Row between these two crosswalks, you have another 26 that fit in here, and you can use that sidewalk to service these guys. And, and a number of other configurations that could potentially work with. And most of the use would be happening on hardscape material, so it's pretty durable. But just one thought on, on some potential layout. Yeah. I want to see how many there's that. And so it comes up like 50. Wow. That's amazing. <clears throat> and then, you know, there are some further design considerations that, mm -hmm. that we're continuing to work on, that we will be continue to work on. Um, the final grading of all these areas uh, with the conce concepts, hardscape material selection, um, the, the planting selections, trees, shrubs, and flowers, I think Mark's already got a good, good handle on recommendations there. Um, the amended soils and the planting details obviously are very important for those, those planting areas. Uh, lighting plan, once the concept is finalized, then we'll move on and, and start to look at the lighting. We do a full scale. Uh, lighting layout, utility design for the water, drainage, and electrical needs uh, throughout the, those areas. Um, and that the electrical kind of goes with the, the lighting. We'd look at um, lighting fixtures that would incorporate. Yeah, right as a pole, basically, incorporating a lot of plug in things and experiments. Um, and then, uh, obviously, the Marble Works property impacts that we, we touched on before. Being able to make that ADA accessible pathway work um, requires some additional property. So that's what we had. I think I'll, I'll just flip back to the recommended alternative. 
And um, if you guys have any questions. Okay, questions of the board? Please. So when we talked about Merchant's Row and the design of Merchant's Row, didn't we decide not to do bump outs? We decided not to do bump outs that would be elevated. So, so the, this here is, a, is an option. Um, it, it would be you know, maybe an inch or two above the pavement and be a different surface, you know, similar to what you might see in the, uh, the roundabout out here. So it would provide some level of, um, for a driver, some level of, you know, I'm, I'm really not supposed to drive there, um, but would allow for plowing over it in the wintertime uh, pretty easily. This was actually we, came out of our discussion on that because yeah. he had originally designed in on the one way raised curbing and we asked to go to this because you could even park and unload there or something. So have we, have we, do we, nobody plows that, right? Like around, like, because it's too um, right. I thought the center got, got plowed. It's a, it's a truck apron, so the trucks regularly drive across it. So I just, just, it's so minor, but like where you cross um, <coughs> by the church to Lazarus Park, it's not consistent there, and then up by the, Anyway, I, I guess I'm just thinking in terms of winter maintenance and consistency, so. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it was, it came out of the discussions that it, yeah. it was a request <coughs> uh, to be able to I do that. I just don't like them. <laughs> okay. Um, just something, so this probably doesn't really affect the plan, but just want to think about whatever we choose, what, what the winter maintenance is going to look like for the hardscape area and this isn't really affect <clears throat> us deciding but something you know is it something that gets plowed in the winter and how do we handle that and you know does the sidewalk plow fit through there I mean anyway I'm just thinking about that kind of and you know added cost for our winter maintenance budget mm -hmm. Um, so do, has anybody talked to Marble Works at all? Have we gotten any kind of feedback from them? Does anyone know? I don't think there's been any outreach yet. I think the, the plan was to wait and make sure decide. that the concept okay. is one that we want to carry forward. Okay. Thank you. Comments? Questions? Laura. Um, I, I definitely like the direction it's going, and I'm thinking about Printer's Alley, and I love the pedestrian solution, you know, the wider sidewalk for them, and I'm thinking about cyclists and scooters, you know, and I know that we teach them that they take the road so they would be going down, but I'm thinking about how they come back up and having some kind of dedicated space for them coming up. So I know you're saying that maybe we can negotiate how that space is allocated that's abutting the bank uh, as part I, of that? No, that's not what I said. I said oh. really that, that was that space was defined by the agreement between the town and the bank. Mm -hmm. So the, the five foot uh, landscape vegetated area and then the sidewalk is all part of the agreement so, so they said they, they want that space they want the sidewalk before it gets to the road mm -hmm. and so that's all been kind of set that's part of the parameters we were working with okay I, I, I think what well what you may have misunderstood what I was saying is, is maybe that space between the sidewalk and the bank we were we we're waiting on direction from the bank on, on what to do with that space. What would you recommend as a dedicated path for um, a cyclist and scooter coming up from the Marble Works to Main Street? So I, I, I don't know that there's a lot of great options. I don't think expanding the roadway makes sense because expanding the roadway, you're creating um, 
you're creating more hardscape, you're creating a wider section for cars to feel like they can go faster through. Um, I think bikes and scooters have, have a couple of options, right? They can ride around on the streets like a, like a car would, or they could, I understand that you're allowed to ride on the sidewalks in Middlebury, um, as long as you're accommodating pedestrians. Somebody made that comment at, at the Well, there are, there are restricted areas during the business hours from nine to five. Okay. Um, and we didn't really zone Printer's Alley, but we, we have said since the construction project that we're limiting. Yeah, so somebody could walk their bike back up. It's, it's, not, it's not a very long I distance. know we said that, but I, I think cyclists, you know, if we're trying to encourage non-car use, they're gonna, they're gonna seek that spot to really come up. They really are. And so will scooters. And I'm thinking of electric assist scooters that will come to Middlebury, whether we encourage them or not. We need to direct them on where to go. So I, I mean, you don't really walk an electric assist scooter on the sidewalk. You're gonna ride it. So I- Looking at this from a, from a practical standpoint, you're going from Main Street and Merchants Row, mm -hmm. which there are no bike facilities, right? You're in, you're in very heavy traffic use and sharing the roadway to a space where um, you know, you're gonna have less, less traffic. It, it seems a little bit um, counterproductive to have you know, a dedicated space here where you don't have something here and you don't have something here, right? So the, the, you know, really the, the project is only printers out. It's not, it's not going into the marble, marble work. So you'd have a hundred, couple hundred feet and that's it there's nothing on either side of it I mean another issue with widening this is you have a very tight entrance into that whole yep. axis you can't neck that down to arms width mm -hmm. like on the road. yeah I think we've covered that I think <coughs> in some previous meetings that you know the, the tunnel is going through this area so it's so grading coming off of that tunnel is, is very much kind of threading the needle to be able to get, to get the curb line to come around. As you go further along the tunnel, you're going further up in grade, and the grade will come around that radius. Yeah, I don't know what the town's agreement is with the bank or whatnot. I mean, the only way you could really do it is to come this way and turn that walk into a bike <coughs> path if they were in agreement with it. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I know. Okay. Anyway, I am thinking about that. But thank you for addressing that. Okay. Okay. Other comments from the select board? Questions? So before we go to the audience, uh, <coughs> there were a couple things that uh, I'd like to just kind of see if the board agrees with me on recommended changes. Um, the sidewalk on Merchants Row that's close to the corner of uh, with Maine, oh, this here. right? Um, trying to just swing swing the tail so that it lines sight line with with the road a little bit more. We brought it when we were designing Merchants Row. We brought it intentionally further down Merchants Row. Um, number one for safety, went for cars turning, mm -hmm. right? And number two, so that it was more obvious when somebody's standing on the corner which direction they're going to head. Um, that said, I think we may have overextended it, and with the change in material, and um, you know, having it having it be one one way, anyways, uh, I th I think that bringing it back so that it, people aren't. I think what's going to be the natural propensity is to cut the corner. Yeah. I guess where I'm coming from, and it and it looks from an aerial view of of the town of Middlebury, it's going to look a little awkward. It's going to it's mm -hmm. just not going to line up. And so I think for for the sight lines, for the for the aerial picture of our heart of Middlebury, and for um, just utilization, I, I would recommend bringing that a little bit. Um, the other is I I think we can agree that a couple different, uh, and, and this is still due out, but materials. Uh, um, Mark is recommending that, that the sidewalk portion be concrete. Uh, a, a particular uh, granite that has uh, some 
it's been it's been treated thermal finish so that so it's not slippery <coughs> Mm. So it's not uh, what? It, it, it's, it has a thermal finish, so it basically they're, they're cracking off the, just the top polished layer so that it has a little bit of grittiness to it. So for, for uh, this slip uh, prevention and, and give, uh, you know, more walkable. And so the area that would be for me a little bit in question, and I think uh, I would propose that we leave it to Mark to propose uh, what is um, both useful um, and durable and provides maybe a little bit of a set set off from the concrete sidewalk and the, the thermal finished granite is the material in the in the hardscape in the center um, if you could point out maybe mark the areas I'm talking about you see the that real extra wide path I think maybe a third um, so that it's not all concrete is a possibility in an earlier version the original concept A we kept the concrete side six foot walk around the edge and then in this panel here we used that there was comments about a more European plaza type effect so we'd use the decomposed granite and also the gravel surface you might see in European courtyards and then you know we kept the concrete through the center and along here so there was a flow through but the seating areas right on the edges under the trees was more of that uh, this gravel you can post gray thing. and you see it in Europe a lot it takes more maintenance but it's a different texture a different use um, when comments came in and wanted more hardscape that's when I switched to this version it's a saw cut very clean jointed concrete with room finish on it and you basically don't do anything to that but it's a little less than the European sit the tables on the shade trees and that so I think there's just wondering what character is there any comments on that so, so I pose that you know what where do we want to go more i mean we want hardscape but it would be really hard in that it'll be all concrete and i'm thinking that maybe texture and materials wise it might it might be more pleasing if we have a third a third material in there i don't think you want to start mixing up brick with uh, no <laughs> with the, the granite pavers and all right. that and you're real hodgepodge so it's uh, i would recommend either we stay with the 20 feet of the sock cut concrete, or you go with more of the European gravel technique. Sock so cut five foot blocks, right? Yeah, yeah, these are five foot blocks. Well, I think it's also it's European style, but it's maintainability, especially in the winter. The yeah, European, European style in Scandinavia is actually more like this. The European style in Italy. I think it's more yeah. what maybe people are thinking, and yeah, as a cold weather climate, that's something we have to take into account. It because certainly would be more yeah. maintenance True. involved. In the yeah, I mean, I'm thinking more to toward the Scandinavian type yeah. of European. You know, puddles could develop, this, you know, in the concrete version, it just sheet drained to the street, mm -hmm. you know, and it maintained, you drive trucks on it, it stays mm -hmm. like that. I would not recommend a loose material if we intend to do any kind of winter maintenance. Yeah. It, it's just it's just gonna be pushed around. It's just gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, at anyone that has a gravel driveway in Vermont that plows it knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I would, it, if we're choosing to not do any winter maintenance in that area, okay. But I want to make that decision before we decide. Yeah. Um, so for stormwater mitigation, we're talking about a relatively small area we're not going to worry about that much concrete is that true too well the, yeah it's, it's not an issue for it's yeah. he's got mm -hmm. you've got a whole drainage plan you'll put mm -hmm. together on this right and th and then the last thing is uh, uh, um, they've reassured us that there will be I've talked about the power and there will also be water mm -hmm. in a couple of different um, places where we can hook on mm -hmm. hoses and um, provide access for if we just want to water the plants for instance yeah okay are there any questions or comments please so i recognize a lot of people 
Uh, would you? So I, I recognize a lot of um, faces in this room who were present in some of the very early ideation um, meetings that we had. Um, I remember a few ideas that people suggested, but the one that is really um, sticking out in my memory is this notion that um, the people of Middlebury were yearning for a public facility. And I know those uh, who were at that meeting recall um, it probably rose to the number one priority for the town. You're talking about a public bathroom? Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, something that the town will address as part of a uh, potential master plan. It's not project eligible? And I understand that there's no money to do it, but you guys are planning this and making it simple, and I respect that you've taken a lot of the ideas and incorporated it. it following the process as I have, I'm really impressed with what you have here today. Um, but is there any thought that something like that could I, be placed in this in the future? Is there any kind of let me let me just clarify for you. We're we're talking about Triangle Park, and I, I don't want to be rude, but I I don't think you're going to find any support in this town to put a restroom in the center of our downtown facilities in a public space. Yes, probably. But, but just to, so we don't get sidetracked on, on the Triangle Park discussion, um, it will not be part of the center of the downtown to have a big restroom on a historic park. And so. Right, right. Um, but can, can, can we not? No, I mean, I'm we're just, we're I'm focused just on about Triangle about Park. It was actually planned for, for Printer's Alley in that zone. <coughs> It was suggested they are not Triangle Park ever. It, it, it was, oh. There were suggestions for both places oh. yeah. at the early okay. meetings. Yeah. And I think, you I mean, you know, yeah, Brian's right that, you know, it really doesn't fit there. the historic context here. Um, Printer's Alley, it's, it's a tough space. It's on a grade. Um, we heard to keep it simple. We heard to make it this connection. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for, you know, public, public bathroom, I think you're on, on the Marble Works property again once you get down to a level area. There are potential, you know, um, probably some potential you know, solutions if you change the grading in Printer's Alley or if you're changing the configuration of pathways. Um, but you know, our or when you open it up to anything the town owns, I'm sure you can find a spot that. Yeah. We're, and we're committed to that. We're, we're actually um, later in the meeting tonight uh, going to talk about a grant request for master planning and that's all a big part of our master planning for the downtown and finding proper locations for some of these some of these things that people are asking for you know children's play areas and, mm -hmm. and bathrooms and stuff but um, there, there was a lot of energy behind it. And you're right. I think it, it was by far the most. A lot, a lot uh, of people talked about it, but most. Yeah, most it, did, yeah. just it, it just it, it doesn't work in the in the space is the whole issue. You know, because there were so many things that people wanted. And okay, I think a lot of people latched onto the idea that there's a project going on. Let's just throw it in there. And and just because there was a project, didn't make it didn't necessarily make sense to to force the corporation. Sure. I mean, you guys have done a tremendous job. I just didn't know if. If you hadn't mentioned that down the road this spot might be something to consider, and I understand um, it's not part of the scope, but you know, it did seem like I, I feel like it's my responsibility to mention that it yeah. was uh, <coughs> very important to the group yeah, and not represented here, so that's why the question. Thank you. We, we do have a list of stuff that's growing that I think uh, Jen will take into to that master planning process. Great. So, Jen? Um, my comment was uh, that I agree that it would be um, nice to see a concept that just reduced the amount of concrete. I'd hate to see the historic downtown looking too modern. And I don't know if brushed concrete or stone are the only options. Maybe there's another kind of concrete that looks less brushed. So, um, I also want to mention the PC kind of wanted to see some uh, renderings of. of how it would look from the street view. So maybe that's an idea when they're considering the hardscape. Yeah, we, we did get the uh, the request for 
for the, the renderings, and there just really wasn't enough. It's hard to do in short order, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll consider, Mark will consider, you know, different concrete options that are there. Ross. Ross Conrad, um, I was wondering what what is the uh, water pipe that crosses over the rail tracks uh, at the head of Lazarus Park there going to look like when this is done? Is it going to be camouflaged or covered up in some way, or is it just going to be exposed? Um, the, the plan right now is that it is shielded um, by the um, the railing that's around the top of the the, uh, the tunnel area, but but mostly. Exposed. You were mentioning that it turns like this, yeah. a different height. Than yeah, it'll it'll be shielded. So unless you're right there looking over the edge at it, it it'll be shielded from view. Um, but if you are looking over the edge right now, the thought is that it's exposed. I know there there is some sentiment that potentially camouflaging it in some way. I think it's important to point out that the the one that was there before, it was in plain view. You could see it from the street. You could see it from. Uh, Printer's Alley. It was it was just there on the side <coughs> of the bridge. Well, actually, I think there was a fiberglass covering over it that kind of sort of covered it. Yeah, I mean, but, but it, it looked so it didn't look like a pipe, but it looked like something. But yeah. So All so right. what's going on now is the first turn of panel like this. That's a higher concrete with a shorter piece of fence on top. So if you were in a car, you wouldn't be seeing it because you'd be seeing the higher concrete. But everybody who walks across the bridge will see it. If you walked right up to the very edge of it, you know, by the back of the bench, uh, then the, once it starts going down, the wall goes down into full side space. I did clarify that with them uh, because that's been a, a uh, point of discussion a number of times. And those are going to be higher. And, and after the project is done, if we feel we would like to conceal it more, the town. Uh, could put out put some sort of a of a cover there. You know, I thought if you put a we have a metal shop that could put a copper cover or something over it so to shield it that would age and and maybe look more part of the surround than a pipe going through. But uh, as part of the project, they've explained that what they're going to do is the pipe will be insulated and then it'll have a a, a cover over the insulation. And so maybe that's a fairly small thing that the town would incur an expense if we wanted to, to uh, provide some sort of additional shielding. And they, we, that is something we would have the ability to do. Can we put a big sign on it too that says this pipe provides drinking water <laughs> to all of the businesses in this town? If the town needs to. I would totally sign up for that. <laughs> Nancy? Um, I, I, I understand this is conceptual. This isn't final. So, I mean, as far as like figuring out <coughs> concrete or whatever it is, that hasn't been done. But um, yesterday, uh, and I don't know if this just hasn't been worked into it or not. Jim met with uh, St. Stephen's about a few minor little suggestions. I don't know if that is going to be incorporated. We, we did get some input from St. Stephen's. Jim right. passed it along. Um, there are, let's see here, I think the biggest one was right. potentially having, a, having an arced seating area to here. And I think, um, you know, talk with Mark about that a little bit. There's, there's concern that if we do something like that, then we're interrupting this connection, the, the kind of the, the view to the church, um, and putting something that was purposely left out there in the design. I think it. I think it was more just to make it more of an oval area coming out there, uh, which would be mimicking that. the the um, fountain area. We understand that, but it, but again. that's really what the church is looking for to be able to sit and face the church and face that memorial garden. 
it was actually also to make it more of a usable space and to I incorporate and, and make it more inviting so that it was a, a little bit wider there but and it just sort of in invited you to look more towards the fountain as well yeah and right now this tree here is the existing tree is there and there's stuff so there's some pavers circling around it and there's a bench so they're, they're kind of tucked right in the corner i was trying to give them like a bigger garden more planting area in the back of it uh right and there yeah. there was also discussion yeah. yesterday um and i think jim can confirm this that the tree is not uh, sacrosanct, <laughs> so to speak, at all. So we're I mean, just, okay. We got I just on. yeah, I just didn't know because I know this is conceptual. So I didn't, and I, and that was last night. So I didn't know but they also how far forward this is. We also understood that they, the tree wasn't mandatory to stay, but that they also liked it. They selected it for a certain reason. <coughs> um, it's quite large. It's a locust, and it provided the filtered light. It's actually problematic, so it isn't, I mean, it is not, it doesn't have to be worked around. And that, yeah, that's what was said yesterday, so. Okay, yeah, just the, er the early input was that they liked it, but it, it, and it wasn't an Right, issue. well, Jim has notes on that. Mm. Hannah. sessions so um, I love the changes you guys have made thank you for listening to the input um, in particular the mountable curb on Merchants Row and that you laid out how we could have stands here I'm not talking farmers market I'm talking food aru so many different events in town super just a great <coughs> opportunity there for just the community um, what are the two blocks by the fountain inside, yes. They were the same as far as the seating lots. Oh, okay. So let's say you were, you could sit here facing this way, you could sit there facing either way. So you have uh, seating opportunities surrounding the fountain about 10 feet away. Great. And you're purposefully not making a mountable curb along Main Street? <coughs> Correct. Um, yeah, I just want to say that it seems like a really workable space, and I think the farmer's market um, is, is a potential space um, for the market, and it would be so exciting for many of us to be able to move back into town. Um, I submitted a letter in front of the development review, um, the last meeting we were at, <laughs> Planning Commission. Um, and just saying how people really want us back in town. We would like to be back in town. We bring a lot of customers into the downtown area. So I'll keep my comments brief, but I just want to say thank you, and it looks great. And, and Hannah, um, as an interim, um, I talked to the college. So I noticed uh, the note that came uh, from uh, Mrs. Peters. Uh, committee and uh, the college is is not um, wholly against and, and they said they had never real had never said no to utilization of College Park but are questioning if the way that park is laid out if it works and so it makes me wonder if should we talk about like uh, Academy Park and the potential for up there but because you, you still have another couple years yeah. and and if it's yeah. if it's shrinking that. we sh we should get together I'm, I've started I, I actually had a meeting today about that because I saw the letter and, and uh, reached out and and they said they never said no that they thought it was not um, an ideal spot and was there other spots that were better right um, and so brainstorming I think we have some other possibilities and we should maybe look at those so as an aside um, would enjoy the opportunity to discuss with you. Would that spot? Yes. I mean, I, it seemed to be the Academy uh, Street and then, and then the, the flat area and the College Park is really 
it reminds me of what the farmer's market used to have down in, uh, in the Marvel works mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. sort of a large space. Mm -hmm. um, whether that would be more ideal as a final settlement in, in the sense of the college were willing to. Well, I certainly, we are not in a position to turn away any opportunities. No, 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 but I'm, I, no, no, but I mean, I'm asking you not in the sense that settle for this, but I mean, uh, uh, suppose we say this is it, and, and would would it would it you know would it work for you? Because I think I think it's important. I mean I, I agree with you, not having the the um, the farmers market where everyone can see it downtown mm -hmm. and be downtown is a real loss, and, mm -hmm. and for you and for, for the for the whole community. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, I think well, it's this essential is to find that space. Right. Yeah. So this I, is I definitely in conversation. For yeah. Me. So I fear I fear that yeah. I sidetracked us here, and I apologize. <laughs> but I, just I just wanted to, to catch you while I had a chance. Yeah. To, uh, well, uh, this part for another day is an opportunity for a lot of different organizations yeah. in the town. Yeah. yeah Market no, right. possibly being one, but um, in terms of its utilitarian right, use. Right. Right. Thank you, Anna. A um, couple of things. Um, I think winter maintenance is something you want to consider because there are events of uh, the chili fest, the, you know, at different times of the year where there could be snow um, that people would, will, are going to want to use this space. It's going to be a great community space. So I would encourage you to think you will be maintaining, uh, clearing the snow off, at least the hardscape. So, um, Our own Chris Kindlemark. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I mentioned at last week's meeting, um, and I, I appreciate the desire to reuse these asphalt blocks, um, but I think flexibility of seating here is really important and being able to move it to according to whatever activities, and I hate to see you locked into these big heavy blocks that may or may not get in the way depending on what event is going on. And I've also noticed, um, I, I presume these are shade trees along the, the back there? Uh, these, no, these are like a flowering crab apple, a lower growing. Oh, okay. Well, tree. seeding under trees, um, I don't know if you've been through the park recently, but the amount of bird droppings all over makes it, would make it unusable. And so if you want seeding, you know, have it so you can move it out from under the tree because the birds, are thick and contributing to um, a mess. So mm. I would mm. suggest that you consider your uh, seating. Okay. <coughs> Avalanche from the Regional Planning Commission. Um, I'm going to be really brief. I, uh, I sent a letter. Um, well, after the last couple of public hearings, I actually left pretty frustrated because I thought the town of Middlebury and the public gave a lot of really, really thoughtful, insightful ideas about how to harmonize this, this transportation project with, with an economic development project. And I do thank the consultants for picking up some of them, but I'm not sure they embraced the entire idea. So I left feeling uh, pretty frustrated um, I wrote a letter, which I included in your package. Um, I don't plan on sending it unless you would join me in doing that. Um, I would offer that as an alternative to you, should you consider it. Um, I would tell you the other letters, or I would suggest that the other letters that were included in um, your package also contained a lot of really great ideas um, that I said, what does this park do for the community? Um, kind of as a theme, how does it enhance your community? Um, and I would ask you all to consider the, the great ideas in your, uh, in your planning commission suggestions and in your design advisory committee suggestions and the others um, as you make your decision tonight. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask a question of Adam. So are you saying that you wrote the letter before seeing this design or after I seeing wrote this? I the letter after the, the last public hearing, so uh -huh. Wednesday. Okay. 
So I'm just curious how you feel about this design now. I think they made some changes that accommodate some of the functional use and some of the other things that uh, um, that help to accommodate. Uh, but I, I would have liked to have seen more. And the mm -hmm. suggestions that I would like to see are, are contained a lot of the time. OK. It, it, I think it was unclear to some of us on the letter. Could, could you give us an example of what you would like to see different? You've got, um, sure. Uh, let, me, let me get it. Um, we, we got the letter today, so we had an yeah, opportunity no, to read no, it before the meeting. So. necessarily any small rooms that can contribute to that big public space and I thought using some of the absolute blocks as planters or things like uh, I believe it was Lily suggested um, was it was an interesting idea to do that um, I, I think you have a lot of ideas to use them to create uh, a palette where you, I mean you, you have Middlebury has fabulous uh, plantings around town um, in a lot of your spaces. I think you could use some of those, those blocks to create smaller spaces within here that can contribute to the whole but can also soften it and support some of the plantings. Um, let's see, um, one of the things I mentioned was, was a pull off for, for an actor bus here. It's a, uh, it's a, um, trans this is a transportation project and the trans is in the business of basically supporting all of the connections. So. I, I, I do like that they incorporated this swinging connection into the, next, into the rest of the park there. I, I'd ask you, um, like uh, Laura was asking about bikes, I'd ask you to also consider public transit. Um, let's see. Uh, where would you, would you just indicate what you're thinking with regard to? It would be, basically it would be preserving, uh, actually actor, or yeah, actor gave you a, a drawing, or gave the planning commission a drawing at that public hearing. And it was reserving a space right here where they, right now they uh, they drop people off here right. and they, they block the flow of traffic. So they were requesting basically a space here where they could um, uh, pull in and uh, accommodate uh, handicapped people and, and basically get out of the flow of traffic on Main Street. So it's not a, it's not a change to the park per se. It's a change to the uh, the parking in front of the park. Okay. Um, I, I would just say on that that's. That's something that is outside of the landscape design, and so that is not necessarily addressed, you know, with this meeting here. On something like that, we we would take our direction from the town um, as as to whether it's a bus stop or whether it's parking. Exactly. We could stripe it as a bus stop conceivably. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, I I'm, I'm thinking, uh, you know, on the face of it, um, probably that spot looks better than the, than the one. At the Patel block, block yeah. and and just simply because of the, of the you know You're better traffic lighter. better yeah. traffic flow. Right. I mean that that's uh, but uh, that's something that that really <coughs> doesn't affect the design of the park, but a decision about parking, and I, I think it should be taken under advisement. So I guess what I'm saying is is you've got you've got all these groups that want to use the space. Um, they can probably give you better designs for how they would functionally use it than, than I can um, necessarily. So I didn't include all of the specific design alternatives, yeah. but I wanted to use, I, I tried to, in the letter, I tried to include criteria for you, you yeah. and the design consultants to think about that would really enhance the area for, for basically all of Middlebury citizens and harmonize the transportation elements and the economic elements. 
So I, so I guess I, I'm a little disappointed that you get the sense that we haven't been listening on that. Um, in fact, I'm very disappointed. Uh, we've gone through a number of iterations. There was more planners with ashlar blocks and whatnot, and we actually pulled some of that out of there to create more space for things like the farmer's market and whatnot. Um, and, and so, and, and to open up the spaces in between the, the, the trees where you could back in. Um, and so, I, th I thought we were listening and trying to, trying to create those multi spaces while still trying to soften it with the trees along the border and, and some grass and, uh, and, and then using different materials. So I, you know, I've, it's a struggle because there's so many sitting through every one of those. If we took every idea that everybody wanted, it, it would look, uh, it, it would look pretty interesting. Yeah. It's kind of an odd thing. I mean, yeah. I understand your location, how that could work. Uh, it was an interesting thing to me working with the Burlington's transit services with their bus stop and things like that is that the buses there do not walk the lots because every time they pull out, they have a hard time getting back into traffic. And the schedules they run, I don't know how schedules, but every minute that they're delayed or 30 seconds builds up over their loop and throws the whole system into chaos. So I never even thought of that. It was like, oh yeah, I can see why they make traffic stop and back to them to handle their customers and they, they can predict that time. So um, Bill sitting next to me is the manager of that and they're very, I can tell you they're very aware of that. It was news to me, you know, as I always thought, let's make them a nice turnout. Yeah, yeah no, that's sure we're broke. Yeah. You know, it's like you're sitting there for 20 cars for someone else's bag. Yeah. They have, they have different means of loading uh, wheelchair passengers and whatnot, so it's a little different situation. They don't have <coughs> to stop traffic up there for us to tra stop traffic on Main Street uh, with UPS and FedEx trucks and all the other competition around a very busy intersection. It's, it's better for us to be off the street, and it's not so busy that we can't go <coughs> but minutes do, or seconds do matter. You're absolutely all taken under consideration. Okay, so, and, that, and that's something we're gonna be working on uh, and going going forward and I, 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 we're 25 minutes over and I'm gonna see if I can get a decision from the board here unless you really need to everybody's been I, I just have one quick little comment sure um, I, I just have a comment about the process and I guess I'm telling you guys because the design team has expressed that they like to work directly with the select board so I would rely on you guys to be the shepherds of a good public process going forward like pushing the design team to do the right things and I thought it might be helpful if I just verbalized what I think the right thing is. I think that if, so we've come a long way in the last two weeks. The public has really like put in good input. I think we've reached a general consensus as a community that this is a good concept plan going forward. But if we don't, um, if this plan um, gets changed after this and we don't have regular public meetings that people know they can attend and places for people to provide their input, they're gonna feel boxed out of the process again and I fear we'll lose the progress that we've made. So it concerns me when I hear that St. Stephen's is approaching the design team directly. They're not at this meeting like telling us what their ideas are. The rest of us have to show up at this meeting. This is this is the public process within which to insert um, um, input. You know what I mean? I don't I don't want to see people coming from uh, coming outside the process, influencing the design from all sides, or it's going to be a very chaotic situation of everyone trying to be heard outside of the process. That's why the public process exists because you know what meetings you can arrive at and how you should give your input. So um, I don't know if that's convoluted, but I think that um, it, it'll be up to the select board to make sure the design team follows that going forward so this doesn't fall apart, because there's a lot to be determined with the hardscaping and the landscaping and the lighting still. So. Well, I think that takes a lot of validity when we get to the master planning point. 
Well, the master plan will be a separate process. It will be a separate, but it's also, but a lot of what you said is going to be very important that we follow a good orderly effort. You can count on effort. me to, to and, do that. And, and what we're going to trust you, that, that is you're going to be your role. We're going to, we're going to rely on you very heavily on that to make sure that that occurs. Yeah. But as far as what I see here, I like it. I think you've really, uh, and I appreciate the fact that the community's come forward in what is a tight time schedule. I mean, our, our part of the deal for getting this project done in a timely manner and, and making the 2020 year especially follow that 10 week window is that we respond in a timely manner. And, and I appreciate the fact that people came out in a short notice. I think done a great job of listening to it. I think of what was there before this project started and how much, how stunning this is going to become. Um, it's going to be, you know, from an economic development perspective, it, I think it's incredibly beneficial because it's a, it's a downtown bright <coughs> gathering place. I can see great dynamic happening. I, I mean, I, I agree with you, Hannah, and, and I think the majority of the community is, we want the farmer's market downtown. It could be there. We can th think of a number of events. Um, this is just a wonderful thing. Things like the actor spot, well, there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve, I think, on us when we get this as to how we use some of those spaces. And it may be we stripe a couple of places on the side there for it. We may be just stop the bus on the street the way it is right now. We'll do that. But at this point, I think this is very, very good. And um, I, I would endorse it. Amy, did you have one last comment? I've been pretty vocal all along. <laughs> so I didn't want to sit here and be silent. I, I tend to agree with what most of, of what people said. I look at this as a, a well-refined plan based on the comments that have been made th thus far, and I want to commend Aaron Mark for their contributions to it. Um, I look at this as a good launching pad, and it's, it's a pretty uh, straightforward plan, and, and it allows us as a community to, to create more and build upon it down, down the road, and for that, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. We've heard my idea for the six months that the fountain is drained. Yeah, I'm all on board. All right. So if she thinks it's a ugly when it's just wrapped, and I think we should, I mean, I have equipment that could come down and lower a bell or anything you want over that, a gazebo, <laughs> and create a, a, you know, you wouldn't have to wrap it if you weren't going to get rain and, and snow inside it to, to uh, deteriorate the, the condition of the fountain it could be a sitting space I mean, you could any number of things but you and then open it up lift it off and open it up for the summer but I don't know let me think we, we can solve those as a community as we go forward I pleasure the board on this yeah anybody care to make I'll a make motion? a motion <coughs> to endorse VHB's final landscaping design recommendations for Triangle Park and Printers Alley Second. Recommended alternative. Conceptual design. Hmm? Did you change? Yeah, we changed it to conceptual. Conceptual. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, um, just repeat that one more time. I'm sorry, I was I was got sidetracked by by yeah I was the hecklers in the audience. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> we, we've, um, we've called this our recommended design concept. That's right. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to endorse VHP's conceptual design recommended recommended design concept. recommended designs concept for Triangle Park and Print Island. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I do want to thank, I mean, a lot of faces have been at every one of those those uh, working groups and, and hearings so if, and everything. So if this is a conceptual one, so would they come back again for a final? It's not, uh, no. This is, this will be going to, this is, they have still work to do on it, and, and we'll be seeing it. But this will not come back for another approval, uh, per okay. se. In that sense, it's final. It, in that sense, it's final. And we yes. still have to, they have to work on materials and lighting plan. Can I just move a, I just wanted to thank Aaron and Mark and... No, Jim. John, sorry. <laughs> um, 
I think that they have really gone above and beyond to accommodate all the comments and provide us with something different to look at at, at meetings in a very short time frame. And I just want to thank you both, all of all of you, for for making that happen for us. So thank you. Here, here. Yes. Good professionals. We need to s speak in the mics. Everybody needs to speak in the mics. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm, <laughs> yes, and we need to, and I, I was going to raise that later. Ma maybe right? we should have a yeah, wireless yeah. microphone. Well, I, I, oh, we I have, have to. AIDS, but we need, we need a hearing system in this room. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. Well, we did, we just forget to speak in the mic. Well, even that, that, that this is a Jerry Bill. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Natalie. That was a very good complaint. <laughs> <laughs> Jen? <laughs> so, so just for the record, in the budget for the, the budget we're working on does include a proposal for um, upgrading the sound system in this room. So it is something that we are working on. We support for you as well as the audience. You just, I, I don't know how you could hear what people got to hear. So there's something about the way the sound is in yeah, here. It's yeah. just not right. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Mm. Don't apologize, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Jen's going on, is here to uh, request that we approve a resolution for the Better Connections grant. And uh, with that, care to walk us through or give any detail? Um, yeah, we, we had an initial um, call with uh, um, the Better Connections people and talked over a scope of work and how to improve our application for next time. They said we were really close last time, so I feel good about this one. Um, we asked them, you know, if, if asking for the full $75,000 sounded reasonable, and they think so for the scope that we discussed. It's for a downtown master plan, as you know. Um, we've been asked to really kind of simplify the scope from last time, so um, we'll probably just be looking at downtown uh, as a whole and then doing one site specific master plan, probably for this space behind us, um, behind the municipal building. So. Um, it'll it'll include reference to transportation, you know, connection, connectivity, transportation, circulation, flow, all those basics you need to be able to make some decisions going forward. Um, it doesn't include a specific design for for Triangle Park or anything like that. I don't want to imply that. I know we have a lot of similar items of business here, but um, but it will in, in include a robust public input process, and I'm sure we'll hear some some ideas for those spaces. And. Um is there anything other than signing this that we can do to help ourselves get this? Do you know who's on that? That's a state government committee, right? Yeah, I hadn't thought to look into that. That's a good idea. Can, can you find that out? <laughs> I will. I will. This is really important because the timing is, it, it, uh, is, is perfect if we get it now to support the downtown development as we get through this project. And I think we need to really make that case. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's and last year it may have been too early and there may have been other communities that could use it uh, more timely, but right now is the, it's essential that we get this, so. Letters of support will be important if you have contacts within the community, that would be great. Okay. What's Pleasure the Pleasure of the board? Well, I, I mean, I, I've, I've had some conversations with Jen, too, about it, and I really get, I, I get the significance of the master plan. 
especially in creating predictability for those who want to be here to, to create these nice scenes and structures that we want. It takes a lot of the risk out, so uh, I think it's, it's fantastic. I, I, I think we have to do this. Um, and I think we have to be prepared. Is, is this an all or nothing, Jen? Right. So it's 75 or nothing. Oh, yeah, would they partially fund it and still award the project? I can look into that. Mm. Because I think it's one of the things that really is so important, and it, it's, it's the next Middlebury after the downtown bridge is done, and we're able to move forward. So it would be nice to have this done in anticipation of that next stage and that, that um, coming out of the cocoon, if you will. So I think we should uh, be prepared to look at possibly other ways to fund this. Um, in, in, Hopefully we get it all, but if we get part of it, how do we make that up so that Jen can proceed and we can do this, this work that needs to be done? So uh, it would be interesting if we can do it partially. Can you make the motion? I'm darn right I do. <laughs> <laughs> We're half an hour over. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> if the okay, I'll make a motion to order to approve the resolution for better connections grant for the development of the downtown master plan, including commitment to a local match of up to seven thousand five hundred dollars. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Great. If you can get Thanks. us information, I think we can help get letters. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. I'll be reaching what's, out. What's the deadline for you? Uh, the deadline for submission is January 31st, but we should have those letters of support before mid-January. Yes. Okay. Because the award date is? Um, the award date is mid-March. Okay. Yeah, but it's due January 31st. That's good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Where did um, everybody go? <laughs> I know. Everybody. I'm leave us here to flounder. So, uh, uh, Doug Butler is requested for release of lease lands via quick claim deed. And uh, Kathleen, what was counsel's? Right. So, that? as you may recall, earlier, actually last year, you approved um, an application for land conservation trust fund money for the conservation of the Doug Butler property. And this is a p associated with that, and they'll need this for closing, uh, a release from the state on the lease lands, and l release from the town on the lease lands. So um, I'll make a motion uh, pursuant to 24 VSA 2406. I move to authorize town manager Kathleen Ramsey to sign the quick claim deed and deliver it to Mr. Butler's counsel in exchange for reimbursement of the town's legal fees. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Here are none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So when he strikes gold on his property, we don't have any <laughs> claim to that. <laughs> okay, next is uh, we have a, a town college lunch. Uh, at uh, on, on this coming Monday at noon and uh, the last time I didn't do my due diligence and come to the board ahead of time to pick the third member and so we have two things I'd like to talk about issues that you would like us to discuss with the college uh, and who uh, we would like to attend the luncheon and um, in your packet there's a list of uh, Kathleen's put in some some proposed a proposed agenda and also uh, a list of everyone who had has gone to each of the of the lunches uh, town college lunch attendance the last one on September 17th uh, uh, myself Nick and, and Victor and if you look at proposed agenda items, there's discussion about uh, the downtown master planning, and this is what uh, Nick was kind of uh, talking about, is, a, is backup, uh, number one, getting, um, uh, going through them, what we are looking to do, and um, how we're hoping to fund it, but as a backup, getting, um, seeing if they would help support it if we don't get the, the grant. Um, 
the farmer's market location, discussion with, with the college leadership on far, far, potential farmer's market locations for next year. Uh, just bringing them up to date, the, the Pulp Mill Bridge Seymour Street sidewalk project, that's a, a really common uh, running route and walking route for the students and uh, they'll be glad to hear that we, we uh, uh, actually accepted bids and let a bid this evening and so that that will be uh, done by, was it uh, July 19th, I think? Uh, discussion of local option tax uh, and uh, that really um, kind of ideas that uh, the infrastructure committee is, is, uh, is proposing for this coming year. Uh, just bring them up to date on the Econ Economic Health Committee, uh, talking about uh, transportation uh, plans, uh, and finally uh, an update on the bridge replacement project. So are there anything, any other topics? And remind her that it's about an hour and we don't always get through every topic. There's some topics that are on here that we didn't get through at the last meeting. Well, I just wondered if um, the Pulp Mill Bridge discussion could be maybe a little broader, and that is one point that you're making, but they may also ask about the status of the Exchange Street project, things like that. So, <coughs> I mean, and they've also talked about some wishes that they've had for uh, bike ped priorities. Yes, yeah, and in, in that exchange, I think, is their next priority. Um, and so bringing them up to date, I think that's, that's a valid there point, uh, talking about basically yeah. the sidewalks and pedestrian. Yeah. Wasn't there another one, though, Ridge Road or somewhere else that they were talking about that they really wanted us to look at? Uh, there was mention of going out Route 125 oh, with right. a um, bike pet loop uh, yeah. along Cider Mill Road. As That's well. what I remember. Yeah, that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. That one's on across a bunch some other townships and. True. Um, I think that was getting support from the state. Was okay. this? Well, I in the, in the packet I think. I asked Kathleen to share the letter that I wrote about downtown parking future. And I can tell you that the college is looking at that too, you know, in terms of thinking about the full gamut of EVs that are going to be coming to us. And we're not just talking about cars, but electric assist scooters and bikes. And we had a presentation to a small group of the transportation task force this week that included some college officials looking at a company that can bring these dockless e-scooters and e-bikes it's both you know to the community no cost to the town um, there's a fee to charge them but it's like the first wave and i'm very interested in talking further with the college about that and they are too so i just wanted you to be aware of that so the company's called lime and um and and they really want to work closely with us so they're not just going to drop these in but the idea is that you do uh, like a bulk of them, and it's a combination of about 200 scooters and bikes um, that would be spread out. And that's why I'm trying to pay attention to where we put these. You know, um, you need to dock them somewhere, even though they're dockless. So I could say more about it. I don't want to take up a lot of time, but it's something that I just wanted to have on our radar, too, as part of the discussion with the college. Hmm. Would you call them Lime? The company's called Lime. Yes, like the color. Yeah, there's a few a few of them out there, and they've been, mm -hmm. as, as I travel around, I'm, I'm amazed at how the, the propensity, I mean, they're exploding. They're, they're all over the place, and it's, yeah. uh, and, and they've created some challenges as far as uh, mm -hmm. uh, how they fit, or what kind of vehicle are they really? Are they a motor vehicle, or mm -hmm. a bicycle, or not? And um, it, in, in communities, I mean, San Francisco was the one that was well well known for the right. issues they ran into, but. Uh, yep. They're working through the answers to it, um, but right. And Van, an interesting vehicle. They are. have a role. In the I know, and I, I was very skeptical, but they brought a, a demo one there, and once you're on it and you go up a hill, it's like, whoa, yeah, it's they're, so they're, nice. They're pretty impressive, um, uh, and they're so compact. You know, they're really, 
so you choose, you know, sometimes you want a scooter, sometimes you want a bike. And, and I was really impressed. So Van Barth is on our energy committee and he was at this meeting and he comes from California. So he knows about that experience and he had a lot to say about that, you know, and um, I just think uh, a demo event sometime in January, possibly at the college might be something to look at. So you can tell I'm positioning myself for this. <laughs> um, possibly, I, I just think looking at these transportation options is exciting. I mm -hmm. suspect they're, they're probably well aware of these as well. So it, on the transportation, local and distant, that's likely to be one of the items that mm -hmm. emerges, but we can certainly make sure of that. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on um, who would like to attend? Well, some people are still talking about the agenda. Um, it, I, I would like to um, ask the college again to maybe make a, a more positive um, expression of willingness to use um, uh, the college park for uh, or as a possible op uh, location for the farmers market. Yeah, they. they uh, I talked to them today. They never said no. No, it, I, I'm not saying they didn't say no. So I'm asking that uh, 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 it would be nice if uh, they they were to say not. I mean, or not just to take it under consideration, but to say yeah. that they would be willing. Well, I, I, th I think we need to lay it out and see where, I, I'd like to meet with Hannah next. I'm not sure that College Park is ideal, but so we need to lay it out and see how it works. Well, I, it's a flat well, area and it's got- It's parking. not a flat area. Hmm? It's not a flat well, area. There's a there, flat area, but I don't know how many tents you can fit in there. Maybe you're thinking of Twilight Park. Are you thinking of Twilight well, is too? Is Twilight Park, is that? Yes, sorry, I think you're, college. I think you actually I think they call that Twilight. Academy Park behind behind okay, Academy behind Park. Twilight okay. Hall. Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's I the know. one that the college would prefer that they use, but we don't have control over it. It's it's yeah. a little Well, I realize I, that I, and and I would think that um, it would make a very yeah. useful location and um, I'm sorry, I got the names wrong, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I've got to keep up with things. But in any case, um, um, it, it, you know, it does seem to me to be a solution that um, in many ways is um, very much like what we had in, 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 in the Marble Works before. Yeah, and that's actually something we need to work through because the college doesn't have control over that park either. So um, uh, That's true. There are various boards. It's and it's I, I it's realize it's there's so quite a history. Of yeah, so maybe you can help me with the history. But, I mean, there are, there are uh, for example, uh, what is it, uh, the, I guess the, the part that's controlled by the, was it the, the Grammar School Association is that it has to be used for uh, what education, municipal, or um, there's one one further general term. So, but yeah. I think these all these all. Mm -hmm. I mean, this use I think would uh, would fit into that. And, uh, can I quote you when I ask for that? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, that is that's the solution we're, we're that I would like to work. But I need to make before we spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. Let's make sure that the farmers market. Well, I think is I think interested yeah, in that. Have to be. So instrumental in that right well, one thing i would suggest though um, I mean, nothing new to this but is the order of the list so that we prioritize the things we want to really hit at first and i would That's say a good the idea plan is first and mm -hmm. then next it's, it's interesting how some of these are really all kind of tied together i mean right. economic health is kind of tied into that so maybe that's the number two topic mm -hmm. um, the transportation local distance three mm -hmm. the farmers market figuring that those on average probably take about 15 minutes each, 10 to 15 minutes each, and then we could, the, the rest of them are sort of bursts of updated information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You catch that, Kathleen? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Because we always want two, two <coughs> hours. <laughs> uh, it, we could easily go through two hours. Yeah. So if we use this as a basis for agenda, um, let's see. Well, the big topics are really master planning and 
Heather, you haven't been in a while. So that's say who feels Lindsay best. And Lindsay hasn't been at all. So I think it's down. I think mm -hmm. my thought would be between the two of you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go? Not this time. I've got I've got too much going on. Finals. For this, uh, just in general. Yeah. Uh, just this month, but I'm I'd be more than happy to go next. Well, we're going to do. I, a better job of holding ourselves to a quarterly meeting because the the, okay. the list just gets too large if we don't meet on a regular basis and so we have a process in place <coughs> to hold ourselves accountable to meet quarterly so okay. we count on the next one mm -hmm. yeah, okay well, I think, uh, can you make when is it monday, monday. what At time noon noon, noon. Yep. Lunch. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I will. I will have to get back to you. I will. I will try. Monday is my most flexible day, but I. S okay. So, in the event that you couldn't, what do we want, or do we just want to wait? Would be willing to step forward. I would. So, so if if uh, if Heather can't make it. Laura, you're in the you're in the shoot. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So now, what's next on our agenda here? Grand list errors and omissions. So, Kathleen, it, it, there was a list of uh, uh, yeah. the grand list errors and omissions submitted by our acting assessor. Uh, a, a number of them were changes as a result of uh, surveys or merger with a, another property. Um, if everybody had an opportunity to look at that beforehand, are there any questions? And if not, uh, could one of you be willing to make a, make a motion? I would make a motion to approve the 2018 grand list errors and omissions as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Next is a Velcro request for new equipment on Shipman Hill Tower. Uh, okay. Um, we hear back from Council. And Council has in your, uh, reviewed a draft agreement and uh, approved it, a sub-license agreement with Velco for installation of a new microwave dish to the newly constructed Chipman Hill Tower. This is the last uh, piece of equipment that has to uh, be transferred over from the old tower to the new tower um, in order to get the old tower down at last, finally, um, mm -hmm. after about a year. Um, just to point out that their Velco will be replacing a two-foot diameter um, microwave tower and adding a six-foot diameter uh, microwave tower, uh, microwave dish to the tower, um, and that will increase their lease rate $600 a month. So aesthetically, it doesn't make any difference, right? It's three times the size, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, <laughs> it's considerably larger. Yes. It's still on a tower. Yeah, it's on the it's tower. So tower. I thought that the tower was pretty well space. So exactly, we asked um, for two things: a structural analysis report to make sure that uh, there was the tower would support it, and um, an intermodulation analysis to make sure there wouldn't be any interference with other uh, utilities, and both of those were cleared uh, by Verizon. So we're all good, but we don't have a we don't have a draft agreement yet. Yes, there is a draft agreement uh, in your packet, and it was added to your packet. Okay. The draft agreement was reviewed by Council Mark Sperry. And, and um, Mark Sperry. Mm -hmm. So, so we're good to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was the sound. Sorry. Okay. Pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion to approve uh, amendment to a sub license agreement with Vermont Electric Power Company, known as Velco, for the installation of a new microwave dish to the newly constructed Chipman Hill Tower. Second. 
Moved and seconded. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Kathleen, update us on our budget. Uh, so briefly, we're planning for a intense, uh, focused uh, budget workshop at your next uh, meeting on uh, December 18th. We're going to limit, uh, limit uh, not eliminate, but limit um, uh, other items for that meeting to the bare essentials so that we can focus with our department heads on reviewing the budget, which is posted uh, on the town's website. And we have a meeting at the same time, 7 or? 7 o'clock. Okay. Yep. It's just the, we're going to keep the agenda clear so we can really go through it and sure. dig in, ask questions. Okay, check warrants. All right. Uh, I would motion to approve total expenditures in the amount of $353,769.12, consisting of $179,974.28 for accounts payable and $173,794.84 for payroll for the period of November 28th, 2018 through December 11th, 2018. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Um, in response to the town's complaint, the DRB issued a decision on December 4th, finding that the Blue Spruce Motel has been abandoned and ordering that the site be cleared and otherwise secured within 90 days. Um, to Did, note quick I, question on that. If, yep. if it's not, what's the next step? They will be in violation of the order from the DRB. So then can we hire a contractor to I remove it and, and hold that bill against the property? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to check on that. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, um, we've had a series of emergency repairs to equipment, uh, one with our 2002 uh, trackless sidewalk plow and another two with two repairs to uh, different uh, pla plow trucks. Uh, Bill Kernan is preparing to bring a uh, discussion to the infrastructure committee meeting on Thursday uh, about the possible early replacement of the sidewalk plow uh, rather than incurring uh, a large repair bill. I'm trying to recall with the, that, that 2002 unit um, when we bought the newer one, mm -hmm. did we just sort of keep that as a reserve? Was that intended to, to, to always be around anyway? Right. I mean, uh -huh. we, 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 there was obviously an effectiveness to having a redundancy, but it seems like it was one of those where, okay, we had it, so we're just going to keep it. Uh, Bill, Bill has prepared uh, a memo for the infrastructure committee going to go over what the need is for a second uh, sidewalk plow. What the options would be. Yep. And what the I options would be. I think that we... Did we keep that or did we buy a used one? Did, did we buy it used? We this 2002? Yeah. I think this was our original sidewalk. This was the original one. And this oh, my one, God. This I, one I, was on the, I was on the uh, public works back. I didn't yeah. think I was on that far back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the one that sort of went. It was a good brand, but it sort of had a, a, an array of issues with it from the beginning. And then the newer one came out, and it was the same brand, but it was better quality control, mm -hmm. I guess. Decided to keep the old one, but, but anyway, uh, yeah, we, well, Bill's, Bill's our professional, so look forward to see what he has for yeah. suggestions. That's, we'll that's what I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, do keep in mind that we'll be adding to our sidewalk network both on Seymour Street and uh, on Exchange Street eventually, <laughs> hopefully, sooner True. than eventually, and around Triangle Park. <laughs> I was just looking at Triangle Park. Mm -hmm. Okay, board member concerns. Park. Laura? Um, I loved the activity at the Midnight Stroll last week and look forward to it this week and, of course, on the weekends. So it's wonderful to see the clay space um, transformed as a pop-up mini market. You know, and I see um, the potential for a lot more of that in our downtown. I think it's exciting. I loved it. So I hope you'll get to experience it. 
Lindsay. Nothing. 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 <laughs> I just want to say I'm eagerly awaiting the installation of a sound system in this room. <laughs> it's the quality. It's worse when the blower's on. Yeah, well, um, but I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I am concerned about um, people sitting in the back, really. It, it's, it's not a room that, I mean, my problems are rage, too, I realize, but that's quite another matter. <laughs> Nick? I can't add anything to that. No, nothing to that. <laughs> you don't have the problem with age. <laughs> Heather? So I um, I parked on the, I had to go to the post office today and parked on the merchant, on the north, um, well, I guess it's kind of the east end of Merchant's Row, and I cut through the park behind St. Stephen's Church today. And all I'm going to say is that when this Triangle Park project is done, we are going to want to do something with that park it's it's not in the best shape you're talking about uh, from, from the, the east Zeebo side of, of st stevens yes from yes yeah the rest of the, rest of the yeah and also wanted to just was was very surprised at the quantity of bird droppings like victoria mentioned just i know i, had, I hadn't walked it's through, um it's, so it, it's relatively park. new and and a lot of volume this year it's actually a seasonal issue, I've noticed. Yeah, it's yeah. it crows. Yeah, the I was going to say, it's uh, the crows because they flock yeah. in the they winter. They come in there and then yeah. they'll be gone, but it is this time of year. It's pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. disgusting. Actually. Yes, they've been, they've been quite... Um, There's nothing you can do. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I guess the, the main thing for bringing it up was I, just, I think once we have Lazarus and Triangle Park, it's going to become more of a priority that we do something yeah. and so I guess I'm just It'll, it's like thinking ahead regardless of whole downtown master planning and where that hole ends up we'll probably want to think about that a little bit. I think more activity in that part might limit the bird droppings too. Right now yeah. there's no activity it's at all. Early, you go, it's an early you go wave thing. your arms. There's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 you can run them off. Beyond that it's just the general anyway. Yep. The, and the other thing I wanted to say was um, I didn't make it, I made it downtown for a midnight stroll last Thursday, but I didn't get downtown until late, till it was almost seven, and I rushed and spent my 25 bucks and ran down to Clay's to see if I could get my $10, and I didn't make it. They'd already given out the $100. But then I had some other shopping to do, so I went and did it. And as I was standing in the store checking out, the guy said, oh, you're a winner. And I'm like, what? And he hands me an envelope, and they were giving away yep. money randomly at certain times to people who were shopping. <laughs> and I won $40 of Middlebury money, which was way better than the 10 that I would have gotten if I had gotten there earlier. <laughs> so I want to encourage people to come out. And, and this was like at quarter of eight last Thursday night. So I hope that people come out on Thursday and support our local businesses and and get pleasantly surprised like I did. So, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. so be there. <laughs> Victor wants to know if he can borrow 10 bucks. Sure. <laughs> this is what my wife always told me, it pays to shop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you shop, you get yeah. money back, right? <laughs> Farhad? Uh, I just want to wish everyone happy holidays and a very happy and pro prosperous new year. Thank you. So I'm just imagining um, using some of the ashlar bo blocks in that park that you're talking about to create a little amphitheater and yeah. having public restroom facility um, in an area where where you can bring you know that makes it really nice to watch the concerts and other things that you can bring to there and maybe make it more usable to use our gazebo and in, in, in our bandstand like it's very little use. So I was really encouraged by Mark's depiction of the new sidewalk mm -hmm. because it's essentially what I did is crossed right through the park on the grass. So yeah. it was interesting that he that I did that today and then he drew that yeah. sidewalk. I use that path all the time behind St. Stephen's. All the time. 
So I agree with you that it's. We have so many big mm -hmm. public events down there. It could be. I, I just think we, when this is done, it's going it, to. That. It's going to be wonderful. And making improvements to that park is going to become a higher priority. Mm -hmm. I think you're absolutely right. And the, I think the Ashland blocks are going to be a, a great benefit there. So we get to keep those all somewhere? Mm -hmm. I assume yeah. they're ours, aren't they? What's I that? Mean, Even if we don't use them, we get to where keep them. Where would they go? We right have to. It's, it's not an option. Okay. We, we, we actually have, have to preserve them. them. Yeah. They'll, be, the they'll be piled down at the stump dump yeah. till we use them. And that's, it'd be, yeah. Yeah. I, it would actually be good if we could use them earlier than later. <laughs> Otherwise, they're just going to tie up space. And we wouldn't have to move them well, so far. Right. Yeah. OK. Um, are there, uh, is there, who can take me into executive session here? We need to. Let's see, where are we? I think I can. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Get back in there. Want me to do it? Okay, Heather. I move that the board. Oh, all right, in accordance with the Vermont's open meeting law requirements, I move that the board find that premature general knowledge of the consideration of contracts would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy if it discusses the contracts in public. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. I further move that the board enter executive session to discuss contracts and under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. You did pretty good bringing us back.